Welcome to our next lesson. This one is about muscles and their movements. In our last lesson we were looking at the different movements, the wide range of movements that muscles can create like flexion and extension, abduction, adduction, plantar flexion, dorsiflexion and so on. If you notice they always go in pairs. If you turn to page 51 in your workbook in this lesson we're going to look at muscles and the actual movement the muscle uh, creates and an, and an example of that. So in your workbooks you can just follow through and make sure that you have completed all of this. The first lot of muscles we are looking at today is in the trunk where we, looked at, we look at the rectus abdominis. The rectus abdominis muscle is right there and then we look at the obliques which are on the side here and of course the erectus spinae are on the back. Muscles of the elbow we have the triceps on the back here and the biceps on the top and they work as a pair. The bicep creates flexion of the elbow and flexion of the shoulder and the tricep creates extension of the elbow and extension of the shoulder. In this one we're looking at movers of the shoulder. The prime movers of the shoulder are the trapezius. This is a rear view of the of a person. The trapezius there, they're on our back at the top there. And the latissimus dorsi on the side. The trapezius helps raise the head, pull the shoulders back, raise and drop the shoulders. Um, netball players we use it a lot when they're looking up to shoot. And the latissimus dorsi um, creates a movement of ad adduction of the upper arm. That is bringing the arm to the midline. Here's the midline just to remind you where the midline is. And adduction is bringing the, line, the, um, the upper arm to the midline through there. Here we have an anterior view of the human body. First is we're looking at the deltoid which is the muscle up here. And the pectoralis major in there. The deltoid is a very large muscle and is responsible for fl shoulder flexion and extension and we'll be teaching you the anterior deltoid and posterior deltoid. It's also responsible for, responsible for the abduction of the arm, that is taking the arm away from the body and rotation of the shoulder. Pectoralis major shoulder flexion and, and and your arm adduction bringing the arm in towards your body. Right here we're looking at the prime movers of the hip and the knee. Gluteus maximus, I think you all remember that one from last year, that's your backside. It's a very strong and powerful muscle. It, its movements are hip extension leg abduction, taking the leg to the side like that and external rotation of the leg. The next one is your iliopsoas which is these muscles in here. It's a very powerful muscle and it helps to keep the femur and the pelvis together in the joint and creates hip, hip flexion. You may have known the iliopsoas muscle as a hip flexor last year. Now we're looking at an anterior view. The top one's the anterior view of your legs. And we have the quadricep muscle. Quadricep, the quad stands for four. The quadricep muscle is actually made up of four muscles. And it's actually the largest muscle that makes up your back. Oh, sorry, it's not the largest muscle. It's... Um, collectively the most powerful muscle in the group of muscles in the body. It's the most powerful muscle group in the body. And it is responsible for hip flexion 
and knee extension. And below it we have the hamstrings. This is a posterior view of the thigh. It's a large group of three muscles and it is responsible for hip extension and knee flexion. So those two work in pairs. The quadricep is hip flexion and knee extension, that's straightening of the leg, and the hamstrings are hip extension and knee flexion. The prime movers of the ankle are the gastrocnemius, which uh, the movements for that are knee flexion and plantar flexion. Plantar flexion, just to remind you, is when you point your toes, or you can remember it by um, remembering you plant your feet into the ground. So you're pointing your toes. And your soleus muscle, which lies underneath the gastrocnemius, that is also responsible for plantar flexion. This is an anterior aspect of the lower leg where we see the tibialis anterior and that is responsible for dorsal dorsiflexion of the foot and inversion of the foot. Dorsiflexion of the foot is where you bring the, your toes up towards your bones or you raise your feet back up towards you. Um, remember the tibialis anterior, you can remember that because it is um, on the same side as the tibia bone and anterior it is on the front side of our lower leg. In this next picture we've got the prime movers of the wrist and I we've got it marked in here as rip wrist flexor or the flexor digitorum. It's the flexion of the fingers when you make a fist and flexion of the wrist. Here we've got the extensor, I'm just fixing it up because it had a wrong picture under it. We've got the extensor digitorum here. This is one of the muscles in direct opposite, it's directly opposite to the flexor digitorum, digitorum or the wrist flexors as we've got written here. It is located on the posterior aspect of the forearm and attaches to the fingers by long tendons over the posterior side of your hand. So that's the um, flexor, the extensor digitorum right there. Um, its job is for extension of the fingers and extension of the wrist and it is used when you're doing a volleyball set shot. I'd like you now to make sure you've got that complete in your workbooks for tomorrow in class and also go to page 56 and on the, identify as many muscles as possible using the previous pages to help you. Thank you for listening to this and we'll, we'll uh, check on this in class tomorrow.